Hey guys, good afternoon, happy Thursday, and we are back for week three, episode four. So it's Tabitha with McHarper Manor. I have Haley, our oldest, here with us today. We are going to do some still life drawing today. I hope you guys are excited for that. It's kind of a, you know, it's a fun low supply one, one that you can apply to lots of different things. You can use it in lots of different ways. Missy and I were talking about how you can even go into the art museums when you're allowed, when, you know, when we're allowed to do these things again. You can even um, go in and sketch like the great artworks in your local art museums too. So this is going to be something that you will be able to hang on to for a long time. I hope you guys enjoy it. So welcome back. Special thanks to the Happy Groundhog Studio, Missy and Sean. Speaking of Missy and Sean, tomorrow night Sean's going to be doing our date night happy hour for us tomorrow night at 830. So make sure you tune in for that one too. We're super excited about that. So how's everybody doing today? Are you guys ready to rock and roll? We having lots of fun out there? Who we got, miss? Um, we've got Brittany. They're already excited for day 14. Yay! We've got Cohen and Bentley from Colorado. Amelia from Indianapolis. Oh, that's we've close. We've got a hi from Massachusetts. Hi, Molly guys. and crew are in New York. Chase and Claire in Connecticut back for day 13. Awesome. So exciting. So yeah, we've also switched to YouTube for our playback videos. So, um, you know, we keep getting a lot of questions about what if I miss the live one day? You're always gonna be able to find them on YouTube. So our channel is called Made with McHarper. Um, the links are in there, they're in the FAQ section. And that's really where you wanna go if you have any questions about anything. Always um, hop back up to that pinned post on here on Facebook. The FAQ section will show you any questions you might have. Um, not any, but most. Um, and then, yeah, head on over to the YouTube. It's usually about 20 to 30 minutes after we end our live. Um, it'll be uploaded onto the YouTube site. We have those sorted by week. So you'll have all of week one projects together. Um, we also have them sorted by genre. So you'll have, you know, painting and sculpture are the two playlists we have right now. As we go along, we'll have ones that are more geared towards drawing and things like that. So you can find the things that you like there. Speaking of drawing, I drew a potato last night. Um, he is he is um, Potato the Great. So we are going to have um, some fun with him today. I'm going to tell you guys um, how to do some fun things with him. Tom is obsessed. He's been like moving him around the screen all morning. He makes appearances. He oh, may. There make he is. <laughs> yes. Potato the Great. So hope you guys enjoy the potato. <laughs> He's going to be around to play with us. Um, weeks five and six, the projects will be listed tomorrow. I've almost got everything finalized for that. You'll be able to get the project list and the supply lists on the blog tomorrow. I'll have a post for that as well. But I think, you know, I think we're, we're going to have some fun here today. We are going to go ahead and get started with our still life project. I hope, um, that you guys find this one enjoyable and the supplies are really easy. You just need some paper. So I'm starting with just a Bristol board. That's just what I like to draw on. Um, it's more, you know, for something that you wanna save forever, for something that you might want to frame, um, a higher grade quality paper is gonna be probably what you're gonna wanna go with. Um, this Bristol board is smooth. It's just a nice pressed, kind of like a step up from cardstock. Haley's got um, pages out of her sketchbook. She's just, drawn today. We need pencils today. Um, I just use, for my basic sketching, I just use a regular pencil, a 2HB. When you get into, you know, the shading and things like that, I do have an ebony pencil and I have my, um, my little Stabilo pencil too. Those are just more like to add your shading in. I'll show you guys how to do some of that, but you don't necessarily need that. An eraser because I never ever trust an eraser on my pencil to be there for long. I go through that in like day one or day two. So I always have some good extra beefy erasers on the side. Um, and then we also have colored pencils today. So these are my Derwent Color Soft pencils. I like soft cord pencils. Um, you guys can use whatever you have. I am going to have a way for you guys to win some of these Derwent colored soft pencils later on in the episode today. Um, Derwent gave me 
a pack to send out to a winner, um, you know, just to donate to, you know, make it fun for you guys, let you try out some new art supplies. So we have those that I will show you how you can win a set of those later. They're really nice. Um, if you don't, if you haven't used soft cord pencils before, they're they're just a little bit easier to blend and we'll talk about how to do that and I'll show you those later. And then I have my little pencil sharpener because I might go through quite a bit. Other than that, you just need something to draw. You need something that you are um, interested in that's visually, you know, appealing to you. Haley is going to be drawing Chester the <laughs> Cheetah, right? Um, he is in a little pop vinyl box. She will be drawing him. She's going to draw him in the box because she's extra like that. So she will be drawing him. I've got a cup of art supplies, um, pencils and markers and paintbrushes and a pair of scissors. Just something that's kind of like interesting to you. You can draw a toy. You can draw a piece of fruit. Um, you know, just anything that looks interesting to you. Don't worry too much about the colors of it. You can always change the color later as you go. Um, I might change the colors of some of my supplies when I go in with the colored pencil, but basically we're just we, we want to learn about proportion about the height of things um, in relation to what's next to it so if you want to put a couple things together that's really more visually interesting too um haley's is going to be cool because it's inside the box so she's going to have to worry about scale this is going to be one of those projects that you're really going to be able to amp up for the bigger kids and adults and you really want to dial down for the little kids so my younger friends i'm talking to you right now I just want you to draw. I want you to draw what you see with your eyes today. I want you to focus on just drawing based on what you're seeing more than what's in your imagination. We love to draw from our imagination a lot of times. Um, I really love whimsical things, but today we're just working on some technique. So this is going to be um, something that for bigger kids, I'm gonna give you some more um, direct things that you can do, some more technique-based things. Um, shading, things like that are gonna be for kids that I would say beyond third grade and up, you really are gonna be able to focus on that more. But every artist, um, matures artistically at different ages. So it's always something that might be fun to try. Maybe not necessarily something that you master today. I've been drawing for, I don't know, how old am I? 37, I, I guess I've been probably drawing for 32, 34 years. So I didn't get great overnight. So I want you guys to worry about just drawing what you see and we're gonna have fun with it. I'll show you some technique you may love, you may leave it, you may not use anything that, um, other than just drawing today. So we are gonna go ahead and get started with the outlines. So how's everybody feeling today? Good? Yeah? We have a hello from Ecuador. From hello. Evelyn and Rosaline. Yeah? How fun is hello, that? Hello guys. And then we have some questions about people asking if they can use crayons or markers. You can use anything you want to use today. I'm going to show you with pencil because that's how I start all of my sketches is with pencil. Um, you guys have seen how I use permanent markers like yesterday's tutorial when we did the skyline. I use markers to outline um, some of my graphics, some of my illustrations that I want a hard line around the outside. But I'm going to show you guys today just how to do a more realistic. We're going to go on the realism end of things. But you can use what you have. You can always use markers, crayons, colored pencils, anything you have. We're just going to start with a pencil. So um, my tip to start is you want to try to decide how um, you know how we're gonna frame this guy out. So for me, I have this little cup full of things, and I like to start with my tallest point. So the tallest point of my particular subject is gonna be this really tall little brush out here. Okay, so I'm gonna draw one line. And he's just, I'm gonna draw it so soft because remember, you can always go back over, but sometimes it's really hard to erase. So I'm just gonna draw one line that's gonna be my tip of the brush down to the bottom of the base, okay? And that's about the length of my pencil. And here's the fun thing. I'm gonna teach you how to kind of draw things in proportion, all right? so. 
when we do this, we're, if you've ever seen people like hold their pencil up when they're drawing, like in movies, when people are out like painting and they're like holding their pencil up, this is why. So I'm gonna scoot back a tiny bit and I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna use one arm, okay? And I'm gonna fully extend that arm and I'm gonna use one eye. So I'm gonna use my right eye and I'm going to say that my cup is about here on my pencil, okay? So I've got my arm completely extended and I'm using my little thumb as my measuring tool, okay? So I've got the top of my eraser here at the tippy top of my brush. And big kids, this is for you. Little kids, you can do what you like, take what you leave, or take what you like, leave what you don't. But I'm gonna say right here, about halfway down my pencil, that's where the rim of my cup is, okay? So you can kind of like gauge that. All right, that's where my cup is. So that's where the rim of my cup is gonna be. And this is kind of just starting a grid for us. If you guys have ever drawn from a grid before, this is kind of how we're gonna break it down a little bit. And you can also use that pencil too sideways. So I can say, ooh, okay, so the cup is about a third, a little, a little over a third from the pencil. I would say a little under half, maybe the width of the pencil. So if that's there, I'm just gonna, you know, the width of my mug is gonna be about here. So this would be the edge of my mug, right? And you're just using it as a measuring tool. It doesn't really matter exactly how big you're, you're doing, you're just using it to kind of grade things down. So if I'm just looking at the, if I'm looking at the arm, the little handle of my mug, Oh, he's tiny. He's like just about this much. So he's, you know, coming off the side of my mug, just like here. So I can be like, mm, that looks about right. It's just helping you to get proportion. And you can start drawing some light grid lines in here that are gonna help you to just know where everything's gonna be centered on here. And again, we're practicing. I did not learn this overnight and I don't even really use my pencil to measure as much anymore. I just kind of do it because I've gotten good at proportion from doing it so much. So I'm just gonna take the edge of my mug and I'm gonna pull them straight down, okay? I'm also gonna take the edge of this side of my mug and I'm gonna pull it straight down and I am just kind of making my focal point right now, okay? And then don't be afraid to use the eraser. Sketch lightly and you're gonna go over it and back over it quite a bit. So if you have a teddy bear, maybe you're, maybe you're figuring out where his head starts, okay? So you are gonna, you're gonna hold it up and you're gonna look at your teddy bear and you're gonna say, my teddy bear is, you know, about half the length of my pencil. He's far away from me. And then I'm looking again and my teddy bear's head is up to about right here. Okay, so we were going from here. That's about a third. So a third of the way down is gonna be where the teddy bear's head stops. So you guys are just really gonna adjust this to your particular project. Little kids, if you're not digging this, I just want you to draw what you see. I want you to draw that teddy bear that you see. All right, so now I'm gonna start my handle. I know my handle ends over here. So I'm just gonna kind of look at it. And it goes about that way down. So I'm gonna kind of smooth this together. How's everybody doing? Don't be intimidated, okay? Is anybody liking this tool that I've just given them to measure? And if any of my art club kids are out there, you know how much I love still life and how much, what a proponent of it I am. I hope you guys can chime in and say, yes, this is helpful. And I realized that, you know, where my my cup may be a little bit wider, so I can just go back through. Or my, my cup may not be as wide as I drew it out to be, so I can just go back through and I can erase the lines. Drawing is a lot of erasing, a lot of erasing. 
And that's why we do it so lightly to start. Okay. You're getting lots of love, lots of likes. Yeah, good. I hope you guys like it. Yes, they do feel like it's helpful. It's working. Yes. Getting lots of yep, love it. Thanks. Good. Yes. Okay. So this mug is not flat, right? This mug, he's not, this square that I put in here was just for structure. That's not how it's going to stay because this is a three dimensional object. So he has his walls. I start to see his walls come around here from where I'm sitting, right? So I'm just drawing those walls in because I'm not going to see the whole it's not going to end here, but I'm not going to see the whole thing. So I'm just drawing what I see. How are you doing, Haley? Good. Are you drawing your box? Yeah. Yeah. So Haley is doing a, hers in a box because, one, it's interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's more interesting than just the one item sitting out there. Haley likes a challenge. So she's doing that way. And then... Adding him in the box, you really have to have a lot of perspective with him. And so that the corner of that box, she's going to have to draw that in perspective too. So that one is a little more challenging. What's everybody drawing out there? We have friends drawing mason jars oh, nice. and yeah. books yeah. and Minecraft characters. Yes. And other little characters, Mario Brother characters. Yeah. Somebody's going to draw a fox. Yes. Okay, so. I am going to start with my tallest guy here. Now that I got my mug, he's at the base of it. I'm just going to kind of sketch my little, I'm going to sketch my little brush in here. Okay. And I can kind of line this pencil up to say, okay, if he's at that angle, the edge of the brush kind of goes to the edge of the, it kind of, when I hold it at this exact angle, that's where the edge of my brush is coming. So it helps me to figure out what angle to draw that little brush that's off centered to. There are more fun things. People are drawing cars and donuts. Yes. Their maple syrup. I think people are drawing their breakfast. Yes. Cereal. Yes. So we're not going for perfection today. I'm going for technique. I'm showing you guys more technique today. Um, so this would not be maybe necessarily one that I would frame. Um, I'm just going to show you guys some some technique on it. So he is coming more out this way. And that's gonna help me to figure out where I put this line up here was just for the height and I confused myself. So we're gonna go back here, his little brush. And his brush is like coming out halfway above. So the top of him is gonna be still around here. So I just need to adjust, I need to Make the top of him right here. And this is kind of like how you figure out proportion for humans too, is like to start with, proportion for humans is actually really cool. We'll, we'll do something with that one day too. But um, you really have, your, your humans that you're drawing really have to be in proportion or that's what makes them look more like caricatures. So learning how to draw things in proportion especially still life for humans is going to make your art amazing in general. Missy in art school, how many, how many hours of still life do you think you had to go through? Endless. I know, right? Yes. The kids, the kids in art club always get like, so like, about still life, but they love it once it's done because it looks so good. Yeah. You learn so much. You learn it. so much from still life. All right. So there's my first guy. That's um, the one trick about still life is pick something that you really like to look at because yeah. you're going to be looking at it for a long time. You're looking at it for a while. Um, so I've got my, my anchor point is what I would call it. And then I'm just going to go around and I'm gonna say, you know, this guy comes down, he's next to him. So I'm just gonna draw what's next to him. Draw what's next to him. 
So these are the scissors. And you will notice if you move around, like if you, if you move and come back to something, the way that you were sitting does matter. Your shadows and, um, you know, the proportion, the height of the way that something looks before you leave may look different when you come back if it's in a different, you know, if, you're, if your bottom's in a different spot. So just try your best to line it back up if you have to do that. Over here, I'm gonna, to give myself a good idea of where to stay, it kind of gives you like your boundary lines. I'm gonna draw this little brush that's off to the side over here. And that'll help me stay in the correct area. And you can see how lightly I'm really drawing, guys. Like it's it's not, it's very, very light. I hope you can see well, but this is gonna make it easier if you have to erase things. And these scissors are behind this guy. So you'll see kind of overlaps and you gotta just draw what's going on behind there. Everybody's making me hungry. They're drawing cupcakes and bananas and oh, all sorts of food. I love <laughs> bowls of food and Missy and I were talking about yesterday, like the things we had to draw, the things we enjoyed drawing in uh, art school when we were doing still life. And Missy liked to draw lots of toys, and I drew lots of fruit. <laughs> I like to draw lumpy pears. All right. So you're just sketching, kind of roughing in everything, and then you can go back for more detail later. And today, you know, this is not going to be like the best drawing I've ever done because I'm kind of whipping through these to show you guys. Um, I would, on a standard, you know, on a regular still life, I would probably spend two to three hours. And you may not have the uh, desire to sit for that long through that, and that's okay too. As you become more interested in art, that may be something that you kind of like ramp up your stamina for that. Nicole has a question for you. Yeah. They have a drawing pencil set. Yeah. And she wants to know uh, what number or letter pencil would you suggest for the sketching? I think the two is nice because it's really pretty easy to erase. Um, the it the higher the numbers are based on the on the softness and the the dark the ability to build value in them. So for me, um, like does this guy even have a number? He's a no, he's just an ebony pencil, but the darkest ones, yeah, the the yeah, the ebony is the darkest. I I I like to go with the lightest when I'm sketching stuff in, just because it gives me the ability to erase if I have overlapping lines and things like that. Uh, sketching pencil sets are really fun to play with, so definitely play around with them. See what you like, um, what you don't like. You might like a darker pencil to build value. You might like a, a, a lighter pencil to build it in more at your own pace. Everybody does it a little differently. So that's a cool, that's a cool resource though. Sketching pencils, I usually just tell people to, you know, work up to that and see if they're really into it. I'm gonna add one more little, my little round brush right here. He's hanging out right there. And you can see I'm not using a roller or anything. I'm just kind of going in here and having fun with them. Just putting everything in its little place. And then I have a marker in here. 
And when you're doing overlapping things or things that are in a, you know, if you have a pile of things, when we do still life here in the studio, I like make mountains and they have to pick which part of the mountain they would like to draw. But um, if you're doing multiple things, you may find yourself doing exactly what I'm doing, just overlapping things. And then you're gonna, you know, erase those lines of what you don't need. So I'm coming through here and I'm the eraser sitting there. And he is, are you putting the potato up, Tom? You're laughing. No. Nope. So I thought the potato was up. No, I'm not laughing. No. <laughs> Krista wants to know what, what a lumpy pear is. What a lumpy pear. I I guess they're like Bartlett pears, you know, or they're, they're just lumpy. Um, not the, not the super smooth ones. I just thought they were interesting to shade. Yeah. yeah. I thought they were interesting to shade. They're like the super, super light green ones. They're almost like a yellowy. Do you know what I'm talking about, miss? Yes. Like the lumpy pears. Yeah. yeah. A pear with extra bumps. Yeah. Maybe I just have bad produce section at the store by <laughs> us, but I really like the lumpy ones. All right, so there's my little eraser sticking out through the top. I've got another little pencil over here. It's kind of another little marker. How you doing, girl? Good. Good. I know we always do birthday shout outs, but uh, yeah. Becky wants you to know it's her dog's birthday today. So. Happy birthday, Becky's dog! <laughs> That's awesome. What's, what's your dog's guys' favorite animal? Oh, what's my favorite animal? Yeah. I think you know. What do you think uh, my favorite animal is? Sloth. Uh, yeah. My favorite animal is a sloth. I would have to say my second favorite animal, though, if we're doing that kind of thing, is a dog. I love dogs. Oh, I love dogs. I love cats, too, but I'm deathly allergic. <laughs> What about you, Miss? What's your favorite animal? Groundhog? <laughs> I guess I should say groundhog. But I would say probably, I mean, a dog is my absolute favorite. Yeah. But we, so we break it up into what's your favorite farm animal? What's your favorite oh. zoo animal? Because we're such an animal-loving family that we can't pick so one. So are we. I think that's why we get along so well. Yes. Big animal lovers. So that's why I make all the animals now, too. Yay! All right, so I am just, I have a little roll of tape sitting here around the top of this guy. I think that looks okay. Looks great. You have a, a lot of sloth-loving friends out there, Yeah. Tammy. I mean, that was the first acrylic painting I did with you guys, right? Like, I think my, my favorites are shining through here. <laughs> And Ooh, manatees. Leanna loves a red panda. That's oh, I do love red pandas too. That's one of our new favorites. Did you watch the Cincinnati Zoo one? Oh my where gosh. Where they have the, yeah. the pandas? Oh my gosh. <laughs> right. So, you guys, don't follow them. the Cincinnati Zoo. They went, you can go back and look at all the live yes. keeper talks with the zoo animals. It's amazing. The Cincinnati Zoo is, just, I mean, I may be a little biased, but I think we have the best zoo in the whole world. Um, they're just so good. They're so, so good. They had the they had the red pandas on what I guess it was maybe It was last week, wasn't it? Yeah. It was towards the end of the week last week, maybe. Yeah. But they were so cute. They are so they kept, cute. They kept feeding them something. <laughs> and they would like stand up on their little back legs like a little they would just stand like there. a little ewok. <laughs> you know. Like, you come to bring me food? The red panda? Yeah. Yes. yeah they would they just say, stand on his hind legs they and then say they would that just feed him. <laughs> their front legs are shorter than their back legs. That's why they walk like that. Little, oh, like, little. they're so cute. <laughs> they're so cute. Oh, you got a pugs. Pugs. Oh, pugs. Pugs are, pugs are adorable. We have an English bulldog, Luna, and she's rotten. Rotten, she's rotten bottom. Rotten. Everybody gets, you know, English Bulldogs and Pugs confused, but she is, she's delicious. Oh, this line is angry. Okay. 
They have a lot of friends that like horses and hedgehogs yes. and wolves. Hedgehogs. And puppies. We would have a hedgehog, but I've heard that they carry salmonella. Oh. That's a really, we had friends that had a hedgehog and it was, uh, they have to stay really warm too. They're really warm climate animals. And yeah. Keep them here too. Yeah. I could see that. It's not like they have a lot of fur, right? I mean, yeah. it's mostly their little quills. All right. So I've got my little marker in here. And here's what happens, guys, is you start to draw what I just did. You draw from your brain, because I know this marker has a, has a triangle top, so I just started drawing the triangle top. That is not at all what it looks like. So always check yourself, because from the angle that I'm sitting, you can't even see that it has a triangle top. Lots of erasing. How are you doing, girl? That looks awesome. You did such a good job. And I'm going to do... I'm good at making 3D shapes. Is your Mr. belly growing? Mr. Potate popped up. Oh, He's potate. He's right next to your thumb. He's your next to my thumb? thumb? My, my <laughs> left. Hello, potato. <laughs> <laughs> Potate. You guys, Tom has had so much fun with this whole program, like learning how to do <laughs> this stuff. This is like giving him life. So thanks for, you know, humoring his fun things like his scoreboards <laughs> and his potatoes. His potatoes. His potatoes. Potato. Potato. Okay. So I'm about done with all my stuff that's in here. Um, so I've basically just sketched it all out real quick, what, you know, where everything is. And I'm going to go back and look and see if anything is really different than the way that I had it. My mug is a little more tapered in than I've drawn it. So I'm going to kind of clean that up a little bit. This guy is a little bit more tapered in. Pull that off there. Gonna pull him down. All right. Now, we're gonna talk about shading a little bit. So, shading, um, we just really, you know, we have some dark values in here that are just, some things are darker than others, but I'm not necessarily concerned about um, putting the value of everything in. If I was doing a black and white, if I was doing just a graphite drawing, um, I would really shade the darker. I would pick out my darker things. If you are just doing um, graphite, if you don't have colored pencils that you're using today <clears throat> or markers or anything like that, and you're just going based on value instead of the actual colors that are represented, you would want to use um, like we talked about those darker pencils and things like that you can that's really where you can build a lot of value in there um, you can start shading in so in my particular arrangement here like I have black caps of my sharpies that are in here black pencil um, you know darker things uh, even like the the darker handles of some of the brushes you could start shading that in as your darker values. Um, I like to work kind of, I don't know, my brain doesn't always work the same as everybody else's and maybe not necessarily in the correct order, but I like to work on what I really like the most and then I build in. Some people go lightest to darkest. I just like to pick my favorite thing out of the still life that I'm working on and that's kind of where I start. I start with my favorite and then move around. Um, you could go darkest to lightest. You could build in value there. Um, but it's really about just creating some dimension and making sure that you've got some highlights and some shadows in there. So if you're only working with graphite, this is where you would go in and you would kind of start to shade in the darker things. So you would start to shade in, you know, around your, your darker 
Sharpie lids and things like that, you would start to build in that value. But you really also want to look because anything that's dark, there's probably a hint of light in there too. So I kind of like to go through and circle out some of these light spots. So like on this guy, even though he's black, he's got, you know, his, his little base comes up to about here. And I missed some of his lines. Even though this the base of this is black, it still has some nice reflection in there. So I kind of circle out some of the white and then I go in and I build in my value. So I'm just showing this for the people that are doing only graphite, only pencil. Um, I am also going to show you guys with colored pencil too. So you just want to go in and build the shadow. Nothing in life really has a really super stark line you kind of want to feather those a little bit too so you continue to just build the value around the outside and then kind of feather that towards that white spot and feathering it is just lighter pressure and building up that dark around the edge and then lightening your pressure towards where that little highlight is and this is just this is the part that takes a while so going back in building it in building it in and we're not going to have time today to, to go through and do perfect shadows and perfect everything, but this is something I want you guys to work on on your own after we end here, and I would love to see what you guys come up with. Um, bigger kids, focus on the shadows. Little kids, focus on what you've got going on. Um, sometimes you will overshade and you pull you know your highlights out. Just take a little eraser and go back in and do it again. Okay, but... Um, a cool thing to do too is to take a lamp um, and create a light source and give yourself some really dramatic shadows. So in here, I've got lots of light everywhere so you can see what we're doing. Um, and there aren't a lot of shadows, but you are always gonna have shadows down at the bottom of where something isn't receiving any light. Or maybe, you know, if we turned off all the lights in here and had just one light source on, you could see some really dramatic shadows. Play with light too because that's going to teach you how to really observe a light source and see where your shadows are really coming from. So for me, you know, I would I would shadow underneath the bottom of my mug. And if I wanted to, you know, put it on a surface or something, you know, I could have my horizon line back here of, you know, maybe my counter or my table or wherever. But you're really going to have darker shadows under things. Where my little tape is sitting under here, you have some shadowing. So just work on building those shadows, okay? We are gonna go over and we're gonna open up these colored pencils and we are going to build in some color with the colored pencils. So you can use a black colored pencil. That's actually what this like Stabilo pencil is. It's water soluble, but it's generally just like a colored pencil. So, I'm, Gabby, they're yeah. uh, they're dying to know what the what the potato's name is again. Potate the great. Potate, potate the great. <laughs> because potato's gonna potate, right? That's what that's why we named him potate. Um, he is he's our he's gonna be our secondary mascot. <laughs> we have so many mascots. All right. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need to make me a potato, that's for sure. So I'm gonna start just coloring this little mug in. And I may only get through part of this, and this is just to show you guys how we're doing it. Um, we may not get through the whole thing, but it's gonna be a good tutorial for you. So the cool thing about colored pencils, and especially this particular brand and soft cord pencils in general, you get to layer them. So you can really build a lot of color in there. So I'm gonna start with just, you know, a general, I mean, if it was painting, it would be a wash, but it's just gonna be one, one coat right here of my sea green kind of color what color is this mint c470 
And I, what I like about Derwent's pencils too is that they're all numbered, so you can put them all back. It's like alphabetizing your spice rack. <laughs> and if you've left a lot of graphite on here and you want to build in with, you know, the colored pencils too, you can kind of erase some of that as you get up close to it because since they're both, you know, pencils, it'll kind of pull that pigment too, so it'll make it a little bit more gray. I don't necessarily mind though. So we're covering big areas. I don't know if you can see or not, but I kind of use the side of the pencil. I hold it back a little further and just kind of let it lay down a little bit more. A little bit more of the colored pencil than I would use if I was getting in a really tight space up and down. Stephanie would like a tip on how you should color glass if it's clear. So I like to use really, really light blue <clears throat> and leave lots of bright white highlights to it. Um, use a little bit of like the gray and you don't have to go through the whole thing. You can just, you know, accent some little like blue around the curves with a little bit of gray and leave it pretty bright white um, throughout. But yeah, I love glasses is, is tricky. You really, um, you were pretty courageous with with that one, but I like to I like to just use a little bit of blue, a little bit of gray in there. And um, if you're using just graphite, really just hit some some lighter shadowing and highlights. You're not gonna have really super stark shadows with glass, unless it's at the bottom or something like that. So we're just going across and I'm doing this pretty quickly so this wouldn't be like my super seamless normal um, you know up to the standard that I hold myself to but everybody really has their own style so you guys will figure out your style and you'll figure out what works for you Nicole says that Potate the Great is our quarantine art mascot yes <laughs> yes he is that's for sure there he is Potato. He's gaining points. So <laughs> did you put a scoreboard? COVID. Yes, did you put I a did. Scoreboard potate on the grade is up two to nothing oh, on COVID. My goodness. That's another one for potate. <laughs> Call the dads. There's a scoreboard now. <laughs> All right. So of course there's a scoreboard. It's dad. I know, right? So I'm gonna add in some turquoise. Um, that was more like the minty green. I'm gonna build in some turquoise. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the cool thing about these colored pencils um, and all colored pencils, but especially like the soft cord ones are really um, easy to layer over top of each other and blend. So you can start building in some really nice um, colors, layer after layer. Mallory would like, um, I think maybe she's having a little hard time on the 3D parts, maybe how to help her make it more, a little more three-dimensional. Okay, so that's all going to come in with your shadowing and shading. So right now, I'm building out my, my darker parts of my glass or my cup. So it's going to be my highlights are right in here on my cup, okay? So I'm going to kind of section that out here, and I'm just building in my shadow my dark parts around that, okay? Because there's, I'm not gonna have a really stark, super, super stark line, but check this out once we get here. Yeah, I like the idea that darker colors are further, darker colors further away, lighter colors are closer to you. Yeah. We'll give you that kind of three-dimensional look. Yeah, and you're also just, um, you know, observing what you're looking at. And I mean, if there's something that is, something that's darker than the thing next to it, um, or if it's in front of something, it's gonna lay a little shadow on it too. These are things that you'll play with as you determine light sources too. So my light source is right above me. So the the this is lit so well that you don't have dramatic light sources. You might have dramatic light sources if you are doing a still life near a window. So you're gonna have your sun coming in from one side and your shadows are gonna be cast on you know, the right side of it where the sun's coming in. What 
you can't see. And then you're going to be drawing those really dramatic shadows. You're going to see a lot of shadows behind. Like if these were layered behind, you would see a lot of dramatic shadows. For this particular one that I'm doing in here, um, I could like cast some shadows for you guys, pretending like my light source was right here. I could kind of like have you know, some shadows that came out over on this side. But since it's so well lit in here, so you can see what I'm doing, my shadows are really gonna be like at the bottom, you know? It's just gonna be where the where it's harder for the light to see, the further away you are from the light source and whatever is covering it. So like under this little tape roll that I have, it's gonna have a shadow under there. And it's just the darker colors. Um, you know, it may be the same color that you're working with, but just a darker tone, more value to it. And then I have, you know, a pretty bright, pretty bright highlight on mine right here. So I'm kind of keeping this light and airy through the middle. And I'm kind of building that darker tone in here. I have like these two weird little highlights that are coming across here. And then I do have, you know, the edge has his own little rim, but you're just really building, building shadows in, and it's a process. It doesn't happen all at once. I mean, you can see I've been coloring on this coffee cup for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. And I'm just lightly going through and building it up. And you're just going to add as you go. So like this is a pretty dramatic over on this coffee cup. This is pretty dramatic over here as far as where the shadow is for me. So I'm going to give it, you know, more of that darker value over here and just build it in. Build and build. You have love coming in from the rattlesnake hand. Just wanted you to know. Oh, hey, Carol and Patsy. Is Patsy doing still life today? I don't. I don't know if she likes still life or not. You'll have to let me know. She does like to paint. That's for sure. Patsy is my cousin. And she does these tutorials with me like every day. And it's super fun because she doesn't really like to follow tutorials too much, but she will with Cousin Tab. All right, so I'm building these. Oh, yay! <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, so you can kind of see I guess you can see over top without me holding it up and showing you, but you can kind of see how these, you know, dark areas are making this look like it really has some dimension to it. Um, you know, we're going to have more shadowing over on the inside of the mug than the inside of the handle than you would on the outside. You're going to have some really bright spots on the outside, but we are just you know, building in some So while you're back there, you can you guys can kind of see this is where these bright spots that I've shaded in here are, right there and there. And then, you know, I have more more darkness on here in the little cracks and crevices. But then I have these really bright white spots up in here. So I'm just going to build value around it to kind of emphasize how bright the rest of it is. And that really just helps to show the dimension. And I can come back through with gray too and do it, but I'm just using the one I've got right now. And it really just shows you how the light hits it. All right, so that's that. I'm going to work on one of these pieces up here to kind of show you guys how this works. Um, I'm going to do maybe the white brush. So the white brush, we're going to give him more of a, maybe he's my yellow. He's more of a yellow. So he is a lighter yellow. And I'm just going to pull some of that down through there. 
And this is one of those tutorials, guys, that could, this could be like a four hour tutorial easily. Um, this is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. These are things that you will definitely want to work on and improve. Um, when we start doing a more in-depth based, um, you know, the things that we'll do when we go to a membership site, um, you know, at the end of April, you'll have access to things that are really in-depth in um, if you are looking for more depth. For right now, we're just looking to get out there and draw and kind of teach ourselves some new skills. Just continue looking at what you are working on and that's really gonna be the, the best way to learn. Um, you can, you know, you can watch technique. There are tons of people on YouTube that are gonna be able to teach you really in-depth ways to do this too. I'm trying to hit a broad audience of moms and little kids and big kids and all you guys and keep you all kind of, you know, moving and grooving out there through this. So it's not necessarily geared towards somebody that wants super technique based. So if that is something that you are hungry for, I encourage you to look on YouTube and find some really, um, you know, more advanced tutorials. These are going to be just really good ways to get your brain moving and just to start to observe the world around you. So you can see with these, um, you know, there are going to be areas that the reflections and shadows are, are going to be the thing to play with here. Some things will have really, really bright highlights on them. Some things will have low, low high, low lights, um, you know, shadows and things in there. Just play with it. And if you want to do more of like an illustration, just like more whimsical, you can just kind of start pulling some, like I'm not gonna draw every single brush hair in here. I'm just gonna draw, you know, some, some lines and create some shadows and definition in here just to show the illusion or show the semblance of, you know, some brush hairs. You can tell exactly what this is. And you can see, you know, the tip of this brush is a little dirtier than the base, so the bristles, that is. So I'm kind of, you know, adding some value in there. And then you're going to still have your really bright highlights and things like that. I'm going to give him the brown handle. And wood is super fun to draw. You can add all those cool grains in there and things like that. So yeah, this is this is the part that I'm working on right now, just the, the base of the brush. So I'm just kind of adding things in. Um, this brush itself is white. So if I was going to do a background behind it, maybe my background back here, like let's pretend like the, and you can kind of improvise with still life too. Let's pretend like the wall behind it's kind of lavender to kind of give it a pop of color to show how white what we're working with is. So back Holly, here. Haley, Stephanie wants you to know that she thinks you're, you're doing a beautiful job. You really are, babe. <laughs> Thank you. So on these, you know, brushes, I'm just going to kind of take my silver in here and show lots of the highlights leave these white streaks that are kind of in there created by the bright lights above us that's perfect that you just said that because mallory wants to know how do you do white space within an object you just leave it blank so for me i use 
um, the paper to my advantage. I just leave my white. Um, when we talk about watercoloring and I tell you guys like leave your white, that just means don't color over it. Just leave that white. So you can see right in here, I've left the bright white and I've kind of, you know, shaded around it, but that's a bright, you know, that's a bright shine to it. And then I've got my, you know, white base of my brush right here. But you can really see the difference. This brush is like yucky and painted. We do those little ceramic Christmas trees here. So my brushes have a lot of green on them because this fat brush gets used for green Christmas trees a lot. Um, does anybody have those little vintage Christmas trees at home? They are my favorite thing. I love them. But that's why these brushes are always green. So I'm gonna build that green in there. The brushes start out like a beigey color, like a, a yellowy. bristles are green by now but they're greener up the top and they just kind of fade down are you showing everybody my christmas tree yep. Tom? oh yeah all right so you there guys are. you guys can see my christmas tree but yeah that's kind of how that's kind of how i start to you know build these these colors in and um, you know, the brush next to it has black. We'll talk one more time about how to do those bright highlights because this is a great spot for me to show you that. Um, I would take this black. So the base of this particular brush is black. So I would go down, but I would leave a bright, I would kind of oval out a white spot and leave my little streak there for that. And then leave a the little streak there for that guy. And you can kind of see those are his little reflections now. So now he has some little reflections. And he's got his little so a little brush. And again, I'm not doing every bristle on this guy. I'm just doing kind of, you know, what I what I feel like doing up through here. And yeah. So guys, I think that's a really good um, kind of stopping point for this. I'll, I'll show you, we'll do a little bit on this metal, this metal um, part of the brush right here threshold or what's your tip for sherry because her daughter wants to draw like you one day practice 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 you guys i did not learn to draw overnight drawing and art in general has been like my passion and my my therapy my free time buster everything it's what i do um you know when I, when I want to relax, it's what I do when I want to build skill. It's what I've done for my, you know, career. It's things that, um, it's practice every single day. My biggest tip to somebody that wants to be able to draw really well, get yourself a sketchbook um, and just take it with you. If you've got a car ride somewhere, you know, take it with you and draw. Draw from your imagination, draw from life. My biggest, um, I think skill builders are still life. Sometimes um, it could be a little boring, so definitely grab something that interests you. Grab flowers, um, fresh flowers that are on clearance at the grocery store when, you know, when things like that are, are not um, just limited to essential trips. Um, sometimes I'll grab the, the flowers on clearance from the grocery store and just draw those. Um, you know, work with different mediums. Find your medium. Some people love color pencils. Some people don't. Some people really love um, painting. Some people really like watercolor. Find what works for you. But drawing is really just about practice. You're gonna, drawing is so important for everything. Drawing is important for painting 
or um, drawing is even important for sculpture. For me, um, I don't know, what would you say, Miss? I mean, Definitely. I think drawing is just a really important part of art in general. It's it's a foundation. So practice, practice, practice. This did not happen overnight. And I want you guys to be really gentle with yourself and encouraging. Um, when you draw, you're going to mess up. That's why I have so many erasers. You can always flip that piece of paper over too and and do, you know, try again, start over, but every day try. That's how you're gonna get better at drawing and art in general, it's just lots and lots of practice. If it's something you love though, it doesn't feel like hard work. So just, um, you know, stick with it. But yeah, that's, um, that's it for today for us, for this particular part. Um, you know, we have lots of things that we can continue to work on here, but, I'm gonna let you guys continue working on yours and show me what you come up with. Haley is you know, still drawing. Everybody works at their own pace. So this could be something that you work on for a while today. Um, it could be something that you work on for days at a time. Sometimes I'll work on a project for, you know, I don't know, four or five days. Um, last night, I drew you guys a potato in 45 seconds because practice, you get so much better at it. Speaking of the potato. And there here's, he is. Here's what we're gonna do today. <laughs> All right. As soon as this live ends, I am putting up a graphic for you guys. He is on the, um, he's on the, he'll be in the images of what we put up and it is Potato the Great. So you guys can print this off and I want you to decorate him. Consider it like a coloring contest on 11. All right. You can color him. You can use colored pencils, markers, paint, anything you want. You can collage. You can cut him out and put him into something. I want to see what you do with potato. And the winner, um, we're going to pick a winner on uh, Monday morning. So you have all weekend to play with him um, or her, whatever your potato is. So you'll have all weekend and we're going to have you use the hashtag start with a potato and made with McHarper. You can post it on Facebook to your Facebook. Um, you can post on Instagram, but use those two hashtags because that's how we're going to find this potato and choose our winner. And our winner is going to get, um, Derwent sent me an extra 12 pack of these colored pencils that I used today. Um, that I could give away to someone. So thanks so much to Derwent for letting us um, have a fun, you know, giveaway for you guys. We are gonna choose, you know, just one really cool potato and we'll give this away. And we're also gonna give away some McCarper Manor stickers. So you can, again, print this guy off. He'll be in the Facebook comments or in the Facebook post today, just go into the image, download it, save as, whatever way you get it on your computer or your device, print it out, and then either color him, um, put him in something, you can cut him out and incorporate him in a painting or whatever. I just wanna see the cool stuff you guys come up with, and we will choose a winner for that on Monday. We're also gonna be choosing a winner for our regular Made With McHarper hashtags to um, receive either this sweet little sloth over here. Missy from Happy Groundhog is doing a sloth this week and we've got the Creativity Takes Courage Frida Kahlo shirt in kids sizes and adult sizes. So those um, are to this week's giveaways and we are excited to share those with you too. Haley, hold up your drawing for everybody. Haley, show everybody how far you've made it, girl. Yes. See, that's great perspective and it just takes time don't feel like yours should be done by now because it i mean really there's no race to get this done this is not a one hour project this is a one hour tutorial to work on your project um tomorrow we are going to be working with the model magic again we will be doing um some sweet treat sculptures so for that we're going to want to have our model magic. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a little cake for sure. So here's our little cakey guys. And then um, maybe a donut. I'm not really sure how much time we'll have, but we're gonna make cakes and little donuts and cute guys like that. We are also going to need, we're gonna need some model magic, some tools if you have them. If you don't have the tools, pencils, um, toothpicks, chopsticks. I love chopsticks. We'll use those. 
Um, a little rolling pin if you've got it. If not, you know me in the hairspray can, use what you have. If you don't have any Model Magic left, if you guys had so much fun and you just used all the Model Magic and made all the things, grab some Play-Doh. Play with um, Play-Doh and just make with us. You can use whatever you have on hand. Um, but yeah, that's tomorrow. So we're going to make these sweet little guys tomorrow together. And we'll have Abbott here to do that with us. Um, if you guys would like to continue to give, you can do that at Venmo-Tabitha, or I'm sorry, at Venmo at Tabitha Dash McClung um, and then paypal.me slash McHarper Manor. Tomorrow is going to be such a fun day. Not only do we have these, we have Sean from the Happy Groundhog Studio coming in to do a date night little happy hour for the moms and dads at 8 30 and then at 9 we start uh, Tom and I are going to be hosting our acrylic flow little date night for you guys. So this is one that I've done before. This is one that Tom has done before. Um, you know, they're very different, very cool. So we're going to go through that for all the parents. It's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you guys cannot catch the 9 p.m. Eastern, it'll be uploaded to YouTube after it's completed too. So that'll be fun tomorrow night. We have two sessions, two times to get to see you guys tomorrow. So I hope that you guys um, enjoy having us be part of this quarantine time for you. Um, anything else? Any other pressing business friends? No? Tommy, I know you wanna put the potato up one more time. It really <laughs> has become a fun thing for you. Yeah. Because he's beaten COVID-19 five to nothing now. He is the Great. So, yeah, guys, check out that um, that little printable that I'll have up for you in just a few minutes that will show you um, the little potato that you can print out and do all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, you will have all the details. And uh, keep working on those still lifes. I can't wait to see. Show me what you made today. Hashtag Made with McHarper here on Facebook or on Instagram. And we will see you tomorrow for week three project five, number 15. We've hung out 15 times. And actually, if you got the other ones, we've hung out 17 times. So we're excited to see you guys tomorrow and have a great day. Take care of each other and we'll see you tomorrow, 1 p.m. And then again at nine. Take care.